The truth is, until recently, I never listened to music while kiting before. As someone who likes to listen to music while doing other activities such as running, I figured it would be a nice addition to my session. So I went ahead and I bought something I'd been eyeing for a while. These Shox Open Swim MP3 headphones. In this video, I'll be reviewing these specifically for kiting. It comes as no surprise that Shox Open Swim are in fact made for swimming. They feature an IP68 waterproof design and can be submerged in up to two meters of water. Because they're made for swimming, there's no Bluetooth feature. Bluetooth doesn't work underwater as the signal doesn't transmit. Instead, the headphones have four gigabytes of MP3 storage. The coolest part, in my opinion, is how the open shocks work using bone conduction technology. They're worn on the outside of the ear and the music that you're listening to vibrates through the bone instead of going straight into your ear. This allows the user to listen to music while also being aware of their external environment which checks off one of the most important items on my list of must-haves for kiting headphones. As you can see, the headphones are a simple all-in-one design. There's the power button and volume buttons that also double as forward and backward skip buttons. There's also a mode button that lets you select repeat, shuffle, or normal. There are no openings, which makes sense given they're meant to be used underwater. The headphones are extremely light, weighing in at just 30 grams. They're also pretty flexible and have eight hours of battery life. The price for Shox Open Swim at the time of making this video is 200 Canadian plus tax. I bought this pair on Cyber Monday for 160 Canadian plus tax. They also come with a two year warranty. Shox Open Swim comes with the headphones, a USB charging and file transfer cradle, a silicone case, instructions, and earplugs. The earplugs can be used for swimming and apparently help to improve sound quality for some. I don't plan on using these for kiting though. My biggest fear was losing them on the first go, so I fashioned an attachment just to be safe. When I launched the kite, I had the volume around halfway up, which was fine on land, but the second I got down to the water, the wind and the waves drowned out the music entirely. Because I was wearing winter gloves, I couldn't manage to turn the volume up while kiting, so I had to come into shore to turn up the volume. When I did that, I accidentally changed the mode to repeat. So for the rest of my session, I listened to the same song over and over and over. I learned a couple of things here. First, on a windy and wavy day, it's best to practically max out the volume. Secondly, as much as I enjoy the music, trying to press buttons and get the right settings while kiting was annoying with gloves. It's better to just set it and forget it before launching the kite. I was surprised that the headphones stayed in place after a few bails. Near the end of my session, one ear did come loose, but they never actually came off my head. The sound quality to me is pretty good, but admittedly, I'm not super picky about that. I have to say, for the brief amount of time I was underwater, the sound was even better. A silver lining to getting slammed by the waves, I guess. Finally, I couldn't find anything online about using them in salt water, so I'm assuming it's okay. But just in case, I did rinse them with fresh water after my session. After using these headphones more over the past couple of weeks, I've come to the following pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. I honestly couldn't get over how light they were at first. They're soft to touch and overall very comfortable to wear. Even though they're not adjustable, I found the fit to be great. I've since worn them with a beanie, a hat, sunglasses, and without. Better yet, they never came off during any of my bails. In fact, they stayed in place most of the time. The sound quality is quite good for what they are. Obviously, they're not gonna compare to a high quality pair of in-ear or over-the-ear headphones, but I was impressed. I appreciate that these headphones have a clean and simple design. I really didn't wanna deal with any wires or secondary devices like a phone while kiting. On that note, I do like that they're one piece, so they're easy to attach to a wetsuit or a hat. One of the biggest pros is that I was able to stay aware of my external environment while kiting. This is a huge plus when it comes to safety. It's easy to change songs or the volume, turn on and off, so long as you're not wearing winter gloves. The fact that these headphones are rated IP68 waterproof provides peace of mind. Given the minimal buttons and charging connectors, I'm hopeful they'll work for years to come. The box states that the battery life is 8 hours, which is more than enough for a session or two. They come with a 2-year warranty, which is a nice bonus. Now, on to the cons. Because there's no Bluetooth, you can't do anything beyond playing music with these, so they won't be a one and only dedicated pair of headphones for everyday life. They're literally just for kiting, and I use another pair of Bluetooth headphones for all my other activities. Having a USB connector means I have to use an adapter to plug it into my laptop. This isn't a huge deal as I already had one, but just something to be aware of. Transferring music files feels a little old school, especially if you're used to streaming music with Apple Music or Spotify. My computer recognizes the headphones as a four gigabyte external hard drive, and then I drag and drop the music files, which is easy enough. 
That being said, acquiring MP3 files kind of feels like traveling back in time. I was honestly surprised that on those windy and wavy days just how loud nature is. I maxed out the volume, but the music was still just barely competing. I was curious if these actually float. Regardless, Open Swim only comes in blue and black, which aren't exactly the easiest colors to see in the water. Personally, I wouldn't risk wearing them kiting without securing them to a wetsuit or a hat. I'm on the fence about this, but I do feel these are a little bit on the expensive side, as most things are when it comes to kiteboarding. Honestly, I think the price is justifiable considering the quality and if you plan on using them often. If the price is more than you're willing to pay, I'd suggest waiting for a sale or looking for less expensive bone conduction headphones. For the specific purpose of listening to music while kiting, the Shox OpenSwim MP3 headphones are great. The bone conduction technology is ideal for being able to hear your external environment while still enjoying music. Overall, I enjoyed the fit, the sound quality, and the ease of use of these headphones, so much so that I do recommend them to other kiters. Time will tell if these will hold up. I have set a reminder to pin an update comment in the comments below in a year's time. So depending on when you're watching this video, make sure to check for that. I do see myself continuing to wear these headphones quite often, to be honest. That being said, if I'm in a place with a lot of water traffic or if I'm listening for something specific like thunder, I'll skip them. All right, so there you have it. My review of the Shox Open Swim MP3 headphones for kiting. Let me know if you listen to music while kiting and if you do, how you do it in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching.